Hello there. Hello there. Hello, 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 hello there. Hello there. And welcome to Weird Music on the Glumberger channel. This is, of course, the show where we dive into weird albums that, you know, stray off the norms of conventional music for whatever reason. <laughs> you know, we, we were definitely looking at all sorts of different music here, and um, hopefully we're getting a nice sort of mix of different kinds of things that are out there in the world of music. <laughs> uh, so today we've got both a requested album and a challenged album. <laughs> There's a little story to precede this, uh, uh, this review or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'll get into it in a bit. For starters, though, I'm going to introduce you to the noisy, music-concrete world of ambient collages, the mind-bending in Shahala Lala Land by Saint Abdullah. So, first things first, who are Saint Abdullah? Well, Saint Abdullah is a sort of ambient minimalist dub project by brothers Mohammed and Mehdi Meherabani Yegane. And together, the two of them offer us a very anxiously charged look at the world of Iran, expressed to us through the use of Iranian samples and just general electronic mishmashing of things and stuff. <laughs> and having released a, you know, a number of uh, very experimental releases exploring themes of identity, politics, religion and the country of Iran, uh, the duo have carved their way into the world of experimental music through their you know, rather unique look on the world. Today, we'll be looking at their very peculiar album, In Shahala Hala Land, released on Loris English's record label Room 40. The same uh, record label to have released Robert Crouch's wonderful album Jubilee from episode 13. <laughs> so, uh, before we dive into this album, I would like to start with the story. So, since starting the series, I've had you know, many of my close friends suggest various albums to me for the series, and this was suggested to me by my friend and bandmate Omar, who thought it would be right up my alley. You know, uh, the main reason being this album bears some similarity to music that the two of us produced ourselves at one point. <laughs> so, when diving into this album uh, for the first time ever, I made the very clever decision of playing it out loud. And... For some reason, my partner was incredibly annoyed by this one for some reason. It really angered her on some level, and she argued, how can this even be described as music? And then she challenged me to make this video to find anything remotely good about it. <laughs> oh, I just thought it was really funny, to be honest. And um, to be honest, I'm not so sure about her challenge, because surely all art is subjective and... You know, whether something is good or is bad, like that just lies in the eye of the beholder sort of thing. But regardless, regardless, her reaction just really fascinated me, hence why I really wanted to make this video. And also for Omar, don't get me wrong, I wanted to make this one for you as well. <laughs> so, what makes In Sahala Hala Land so confusing then? Well, it's in... I feel like it's entirely in part to the 22 and a half minute opening track Glamour Factory. Um, this is one of the most extreme forms of audio, collage, music concrete, field recordings and plunderphonics I have ever heard. This track is such a beast to wrap one's head, had, one's head around. It's constructed from so many different samples and we're given a proper smorgasbord of cut up audio recordings that repeat, warp, blend, get thrown into the stratosphere like it's like there's no rules for this thing. <laughs> you know, uh, it's it's very peculiar though. Like um, you know, the stat the track starts off with this really peculiar piano motif that carries through it, you know, throughout much of the recording. Like it will come in at, you know, different parts and stuff while we're given the lovely greeting of Shalom that will repeat many, many times in this track. <laughs> you know, and uh, from there though, you, you just get this, you know, overload of human voices, you know, speech, televisions, the sound, the outside world and stuff going on. 
I think there's even live streams in there, like, you know, YouTube videos and stuff. <laughs> and it's, it's all just moving from place to place, though, and... You know, going from setting to setting, going from calm to noisy to absurd to ridiculous. It's, it's, almost an, it's almost an overload of information being thrown at you through the speakers. And an incredibly deep dive into the world that Saint, um, Saint Abdullah have dubbed in Shahala Hala land. <laughs> oh boy, it, it's an incredibly surreal world that is genuinely full of emotion though. And, you know, this human element of people. You know, uh, you know, you get the aforementioned melancholy to humour though, it just goes across this range of uh, human emotions, the spectrum of it all, it's, 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 it's weird though, it's so weird, They're like, it, it's hard not to find it funny at times though, because it's so ridiculous in how they've completely bastardised the sound of the human voice through their electronic manipulation. <laughs> Weirdly funny at times. We will touch upon that upon that later in uh, this video as well. There's there is something to mention there. But uh, going back to the album though, if this is how the album first opens up, what's the rest of the album like? <laughs> well, in the final three tracks though, we get something that's arguably more conventional. But I maybe feel like that's only the case because we've been, been bombarded with this 22-minute audio collage. So, uh, you know, track two, uh, Blurring of Management Theory. It feels like this gentle, glitchy ambient track that pings along with a peculiar delay effect while this gentle thumping just pushes it along. And it's a peculiar track that, as the duo seems to sabotage the recordings as it's progressing as well. They throw that percussive beat off balance, and the whole thing just sounds really wonky for the most part at times. <laughs> you know, it, it feels like Fly Pan Am levels of sabotage at times, with it just being so weird and peculiar. Like, it just finds ways to just throw you off track and uh, you know, just confound and confuse you. And then, track three, 4,000 Rat Patrol posters. Brilliant name. <laughs> this is arguably the nicest track on this album. It's you know, uh, just shy of 10 minutes, this is the second longest track we have, but there's something whimsical and amusing about the sentiment it pushes forward. You know, there's this peculiar clicks and electronic glitches that loop and give us a sense of structure, whilst this keyboard just seems to solo on top of the whole thing in this very jazzy fashion. And then you're given more human voices that loop over the top of everything, further expanding upon the world building of this album experience. And the whole vibe of this one, you know, from the the, the jazzy keyboards, the electronic looping, the, the voices that are going over, it, it just sounds really lovely and interesting. Like, I, I just genuinely really like this track. It's so lovely. A lovely combination of ambience, dub, glitch, collage effects. Arguably more accessible than the other tracks, but <laughs> who knows? It's a bit moot, maybe. <laughs> and then... Uh, the album ends on uh, the four minute track, uh, Chiasmatic Relations, which is a gentle, confusing, somewhat glitchy ambient track that throws surprises in there for good measure, of course. <laughs> oh, like so much of this album though, you just never know what to fully expect at times, you know? Just when you think a track is heading towards a certain direction, it just seems to go completely left field and explore notions of something else entirely. And even on the album's shortest track, we still have this, this effect though of just you know, confusion and exploring and experimentation. And um, you know, there's a gentle whimsical quality to this track and I feel like it, it does close off the album in this really nice fashion. You know, further adding to the confusion but still expanding on that world building and stuff. It, it, it ends rather suddenly as well, like it's just like bam, there you go, done. But it's, it's kind of lovely I feel. <laughs> Oh, and I, I also feel I should mention as well, uh, this track was released um, as a bonus single featuring two additional tracks from St. Abdullah. Uh, it featured Until and Piston, which also just seem to just, they sound so different, but also so much of the same of this weird experimentation that the band do. It's very peculiar, just further building on this weird world that we're exploring. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, the, I feel like that about sums up in Sahala Halaland uh, by Saint Abdullah. You know, this album's a very confusing one, and it, you know, it just never seems to... You know, I wrote down that it never seems to stick to one concept at a time, but to be honest, it kind of does, because it's exploring, you know, just uh, 
like we said, politics, religion, identity, humans is like such a, human interaction as well is such an important part of this. But it's, I'm so confused by it because it feels like it's exploring it in so many different ways, if that makes sense. You know, it's, or maybe it feels that way because it's so just crazy and frenetic at times, especially in that first track. You know, it's, 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 it's amazing though because you've got two musicians here just really artistically expressing themselves with these, you know, almost random attacks of sound and instru instruments and stuff. It's so weird, so unusual, but the more you listen to it, you know, especially that, that opening track, Glamour Factory, the, the more you just find hidden within it though, and just like little details that, you know, just express so much of their artistic creation and intention. <laughs> it, it's amazing, the duo have just dived completely headfirst into this world of their own creation. And it's one that feels like this living, breathing entity born from the world that they perceive around them. What's nice is that we even have some context for this project as well, with Saint Abdullah providing some very interesting background information on the album's Bandcamp page. And it helps to explain a bit more about what we're hearing and experiencing when listening to this whole thing, as well as giving us some very helpful guidance when approaching this work. Like, it helps to just add that context that makes it a bit easier to digest because it's so confusing otherwise. And what I like though is this one particular quote that I feel really helps so sum up a bit about this um, in a way, like why it sounds so crazy. Quote being as follows, It's not all serious. In a lot of ways, the piece is humorous. If only you could understand. We can and do exercise the right to laugh at ourselves. We should always be able to laugh. You know, I find the something really comforting about reading this particular passage and you know when I first heard Glamour Factory like for the first time ever like that whole 22 minute collage I couldn't help but like instinctively laugh at certain parts of it like you know for example there's nine minutes into it so there's this weird stuttering repetition that triggers this reaction in me <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Every, even when I hear it now, it still just makes me laugh. I, I don't know why, it's just the way that voice sounds. <laughs> But that's okay, you know, it, it's okay to laugh, and even at artistic projects with artistic intent, you know, I feel as though Saint Abdullah seemed to understand that the humour and absurdity in Glamour Factory doesn't really detract from the overall experience we as listeners get out of experiencing the piece, but instead is as relevant and as important as everything else we might feel. So, you know, thank you for that, I, I feel better about it now, to be honest. <laughs> And so, to go back to my partner's challenge, what is good about this album? To be honest, I don't know. <laughs> That's definitely a cop-out, but, you know, for me, it's I find albums like this, you know, and projects like this so interesting. It's given me so much to think about, you know, it's made my mind wander to places it never would have done so before. And it's made me feel a wonderful mixture of different emotions when absorbing the entire album piece. You know, there's melancholy, and there's humour, like, what a weird mix, right? <laughs> no, and I feel like whether it's good or not is, it's too subjective, it's too subjective to dive into, so you, that's right, you right there, you're just gonna have to experience this album for yourself, I think. <laughs> Come to your own conclusions, and you know, if you don't like it, that's fine, that's fine, because Saint Abdullah probably don't mind, do they? They certainly seem more than able to laugh at themselves and know when to not take themselves seriously. And I guess you know, it, maybe it's about finding that balance, you know. Some of this album feels serious, some of it feels very humorful, and that's fine. You know, and I think it's incredibly interesting for that reason as well, like, it's very interesting indeed. And with that, I think we're coming to the end of today's episode of Weird Music. It took a long time for me to come up with the words to talk about this album, but I think I got there eventually. Uh, it's still a bit wonky and all over the place, but you know what? So is this album. <laughs> 
You know, I, I certainly find this one very interesting though. You know, sound art, music concrete collages, it creates incredibly confusing and baffling experiences. But they also create some of the most unique experiences you get when you sit down to listen to something. And, there, and the world of experimental music, it's full of stuff like this. And the conversations, the experiences, what we feel uh, when we, that we get from work like this. No, it's, you know, it, 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 that's something to be enjoyed. You know, even if you didn't like it, it still made you feel something, maybe. You know, uh, I guess this is a, you know, an argument for art in general, but whatever, whatever. So if you are intrigued and want to check out the, uh, the crazy albums by Saint Abdullah, uh, the link to Inshallah Hala Land is, and some of their other works are in the description below. And if you watching right now have any suggestions for a future video, uh, then feel free to pop it in the comments and we might come across it in a future video. For now I would uh, like to also thank Omar and Jenny for the concept behind this video. I hope I've done it justice for both of you to be fair. We'll have to see of course. <laughs> and yeah, I'd like to thank you for watching today's episode of Weird Music. I wish you all the very best, take care and bye bye for now. Bye bye! Thank you.